Hey Luke here with CaptainCarp.com and it is a beautiful spring day. It's only 10 a.m. and it's already in the 70s, but this is not going to last. We got a cold front coming in by the end of the week, so I've got to enjoy it while this lasts. And we're in the middle of the quarantine right now, so getting out and doing some fishing sounds awesome. Also, I'm gonna take a little break from my uh, floating fishing cabin build project over here. Oh, oh wait, you haven't seen that yet? Haha, <laughs> stay tuned, that video's coming. So we're going to take my little skiff and uh, me and Jacob are going to do a little catfishing. See what happens. Jacob, you need pants. You can't go out naked. You going to go run and get some pants on? I'm going to do a little float fishing today and I'm going to use these floats I picked up at the catfish conference. Look at those sexy little lookers. That was going to be fun. Hey Jacob. You ready to go fishing? Mm -hmm. Here's your milk, bud. Hop in your car seat. Bye bye, mama. Be safe. All right, let's go. Oh, I'm not the only one. All right, Jake, you ready to go fast? Yeah. Well, today the water's really high, it's really warm, and it's really windy, so I'm trying to stay out of the wind by picking which bends of the river I fish on. You can see around that corner it's choppy over there because the wind is coming this direction. So these trees are blocking the wind and sheltering us a little bit. And this area over here is normally a marsh and it's properly underwater. So with the warm weather and the sun and the high water, I'm guessing that these shallow areas would be really good for catfish and maybe some bowfin. So I'm gonna go try over there. Well, the wind's gonna be a real problem, so I'm gonna try to park the boat parallel to the wind. So I've got one anchor off the front, one anchor off the back, and I'm just tightening them up until both anchor lines are tight, and that should keep us pretty still. I've got two rods rigged up with floats, so I'm making sure the wind is to my back. You always wanna fish with the wind to your back when you're using floats, because you can cast out as far as you can and then open up your bale and let the wind take your bait even further. So it greatly increases your range and reduces the amount of time that you need to recast your rods. You can just kind of cast them out there and let the wind be your friend instead of your enemy. This is great because this will allow me to really explore this marsh and get a lot of line out there without uh, too much trouble. All right, today we've got just frozen bait. So I've got a bunch of frozen eels and I've got some small shad and one big shad. So I'm gonna take two chunks of really big shad and I'm gonna pitch them out there and hope for a big blue catfish. Then I'm gonna take some smaller pieces of uh, shad and eel and I'm gonna bomb them out through with my little rods and a few under the floats. We'll see what happens. I'll tell you what, fresh bait always works better, but you know, I live in the real world. Sometimes you just can't do that. So today we are using frozen baits which is fine. They'll still catch fish, just not as good. Shad, bluegill, herring, eel, these are all good baits, but one of the big differences is the eel almost never comes off the hook. It's really, really tough. So if you have a lot of fish stealing your bait, try eel. Underneath one of the bobbers, I've got a number four shiner hook, and I've got this nice little chunk of shad I'm gonna chuck out. Under the other bobber, I have a number four circle hook, and I'm gonna use a chunk of eel like that. Okay, one of the bottom rigs, gonna do a chunk of eel. Oh, that stuff is so tough. Okay, you wanna leave lots of hook point exposed. All right, I got a number eight Gamakatsu circle hook right here. There you go, huge old piece. We're gonna swing for the fences. A big old head piece on an eight dot Gamakatsu circle hook. To cast a little piece of eel. 
getting a lot of little bites on the very big pieces of shad, but they're not hooking up, which usually tells me that's a little catfish messing with them. If that continues, we'll just go and reel up the big rod and then check out one of the small rods with the small bait and hook and see if we can't catch them. Oh yeah, Let's make that here beautiful. Well, we've been here about 15 minutes and we've seen some bait fish jump and gotten a few nibbles, but not really what we're looking for. So I think we're going to pull up rods and go try another spot. Oh, look at that. Oh. Look at that, Jake. Look at that. Well, oh, that's a nice fish. Oh. All righty. Look at great fish. Yeah, reel them. Can you reel them? Here's a trick for all you parents out here. This is the toddler rod holder. Just shove it in their life vest. Okay. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, he looks good. Yeah. Oh. oh, nice fish, Jake. Oh, look at that. Nice one, Jake. He's burping. You want to hold your catfish? No. No. Oh, here. I'm just gonna take a picture with you. He's okay. He won't hurt you. We're gonna put him over here. Apple. Are you gonna? Are you, gonna you gonna punch him? Oh, there he goes. <laughs> he punched him into the water. Well, you're so hardcore. Yeah, the slimy high five. Well, that certainly gives me pause about whether to actually move spots or not, but I'm, I'm gonna stick to it. I, I think we can find a better spot than that. So we're gonna keep moving. All right, guys, we're just cruising along here. Got my eyes glued to the fish finder. We're gonna see if we can find any little holes to try. All right, here's an interesting spot. We've got this really steep bank and we've got all these fallen trees down here and it drops down to 20 feet and you can see the current comes around that bend and sweeps down right in here so you're on a current seam and you have a lot of structure on a really big drop off that's like a trifecta of of different sweet spots so that's something i'd like to try now one of the problems though is you see you got these guys fishing right over here I'd have to anchor upstream to be able to fish that spot. I'd be right in their business and on top of their gear. So I'm just gonna wait until they're done and I'll come back here later and try this. Just kind of looking at the sonar, going down this, this bank here and looking for some structure. We got a nice stretch here with some decent current, about 10 feet of water and loads of snags and lots of turtles. So I'm thinking that maybe this is a good spot to try. We're gonna anchor up right here and we're gonna kind of cast all around those snag areas. This stretch I want to fish is pretty long, so I'm going to start here at the top of the hole by only letting out about half my anchor line. And if I don't get anything, then I can just let out another 50 feet of anchor line, go further down in the hole, and fish that as well without having to lift up anchor. Because we're fishing a bit of current here, I'm going to switch out my leads. I've got a three ounce cannonball lead, and the cannonball leads are good for bouncing your bait along rocks and not getting snagged up. So if you're drifting, they're pretty good. I want something that's going to grip the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to a disc sinker here. And I've got a three ounce and a five ounce here, and so that'll help keep it on the bottom a little bit better. Well, we got all of our rods out. Now we're playing the waiting game. We'll give it another 15 minutes. And Jake here is playing with my bobbers and my lures. Oh yeah, that's all very good. Oh. Yeah, it's a big fish. It's a big catfish. A big catfish, yeah, probably. Oh, there he is, I see him. Oh. Yeah, nice channel catfish. Yeah, a big channel catfish. This is Well, look at that, that's that's a young one. See, he's still got his spots. The spots on him? Yeah, a little A family of muskrats right there. There's a cell, see that? Well, it's real quiet here. We've been picking up a little bite here and there, but just not much going on. The weather's weird, and when the weather's weird, the fishing can be weird. So we might have to try something a little bit outside the norm. I can't. I love it. 
All right, we're just gonna go ahead and drift down the river a little bit. We're in about nine feet of water. We're gonna see if we can't pick something up. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> if you're searching for the catfish, kind of like I am today, drifting can be a real great way to do it because it allows you to cover a lot of ground and kind of see where the catfish are at. But you need a long straightaway with relatively even depth. Otherwise, it's just a real pain in the butt. If you get too many snags, if the depth is going up and down, it's 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 hard, but this this will be okay. You can drift fish a lot of different ways, but generally speaking, you want to use smaller hooks and smaller baits that are more bite size, so the fish can just hit it as it's going by and get it in its mouth. Also, you want to use leads that are relatively snag free, like a dragging lead or a round bank sinker or a cannonball lead, something like that. Whoops, stand away, <laughs> All right, hold on to your sandwich. All right, we're gonna do a quick anchor job. All right, just riding the nose up on this beach real quick. Gonna throw out a couple rods and just see if we can get anything. Guys? Hey Jay, where are you going? Um. Where are you going? Come back in the boat. All right, there. It's just tied up to a log sticking out. We'll try fishing here. All right, we're tied up to that log and we're in about 10 and a half feet, 11 feet of water. And I got a lot of current ripping through here, but we've got logs sticking out all over there and a fair amount of bait fish on the sonar. So let's see what we can find. Oh, look at that. Look, here, oh, look at that. Good, strong hit. You want them, Jake? Yeah. Yeah, that's a real bite. Let's see. Um, Get them up out of those snags. Oh, that's a blue catfish. Look at that. Blue catfish. Yeah. Yeah, he hit that hard. Should we put him back? There he goes. Hadn't even gotten all the rods baited up and we got one fish already. So that's much more what I've been expecting. So let's uh, try that again. Well, Jake started randomly hitting some buttons on my fish finder and he made the screen brighter. So now you can see it really well. Hey, good job, Jake. Oh, right here again. Oh, I think he, he bit it and took us into a snag. Oh, he popped off again. Well, at least we know there's a lot of them in there. All right. Don't don't put those in your mouth, buddy. Don't don't lick those. Don't lick them. We had two or three bites and landed one fish, so definitely a little bit of action, but it's cooled off now, so we're going to pick up and move a little bit. Oh! Look at that. It's a big one. Do you want to reel him in? Yeah. Look at he's taking drag. He's making runs. He's pulling drag. Yeah, it's a blue catfish. Oh, look at that. A little decent sized one, too. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a big boy. Yeah. Woo. Oh, he chomped the uh, he chomped the eel. Yeah, look at that. That's not a bad catfish. Well, it took us all day to get a decent one, but there we go. He's a decent fish. There he goes. Ah, eel is so tough. Look at that. Bait's still on the hook. That's the great thing about eel. You'll never lose your bait. You having fun, buddy? Yeah. Let's reel up the rods and try another spot. Try one more spot. Oh, little turtle. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. You want to reel him in? Oh, is it a catfish? Or is it a, sn or is it a bowfin? You think it's a bowfin? Yeah. Oh, look at this. It's a special kind of catfish. 
That's a bullhead catfish. Look at the size of that bullhead. That is the biggest bullhead I think I have ever caught. I don't want to got them. You want to hold them? Yeah. Well, here, hold them. I'm done. Oh, put, oh, you're done? You're done? Here. We, all right, let's, let's put him in the water. <laughs> now we've now caught chow catfish, blue catfish, and bullheads. <laughs> ah! Oh, look, fish. Oh, there's fish. Kind of threw him in a little bit shallow. <laughs> it's a really cool looking float. Only problem with it is it's got this massive hole in the middle. So you need jumbo sized beads to, to stop it. And even though it, it's weighted, it's not self cocking, mean, meaning that when it's in the water, it doesn't yeah. sit upright unless you add weight. So I had to put about a half ounce lead on it to make it sit upright. It's a little past six o'clock. I think we better start thinking about going home. Well, there you go, guys. Fishing for catfish on a tiny little river. Nothing, nothing too fancy. Hopefully you got some tips out of it and had a good time watching the video. If you want to see more videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching, guys.